Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking this time out to listen. Today, I am talking to individuals who are in relationships, and you're wondering why you are having so many problems, especially when it comes to things like housing, food, and job. Of course, children have their share of responsibilities, but I want to focus on the housing the food and the job. Some of you all have argued about the rent or the mortgage. Some of you others have had issues about not getting enough quality groceries. And by and what I mean by quality groceries, I'm talking about, you know, food, serious food, food that's going to, you know, stick to your ribs. We're talking about meat, potatoes, vegetables, fruit, okay? And those other individuals who have had issues with jobs, either working too much, working too little, or you're not working at all, okay? The arguing, the fussing, the fighting, the name calling, I'm going to pay you back, I'm going to take the kids, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. There was a light bulb that went off in my head one day, and that light bulb went something like this. A woman or a girl is used to a certain way of life when she's with her parents. A son is used to a certain way of life when he is with his parents. Depending on what that life was like will determine how he views things like taking care of family, taking care of responsibilities that are connected with family, i.e. house, food, and job. So if my mother and my father had issues with keeping a roof over our heads and If they were arguing often about bills and if daddy wasn't keeping a job or he had his own little hustle and that hustle caused a lot of tension in the household, then I can go into a relationship with all of that stuff, the uncomfortable feelings, the tension, the anger, the upset, the confusion, the walking on eggshells. I can bring all that into a relationship with me. And if I'm bringing all of that into a relationship with me, then it's going to be real hard to deal with a man when he doesn't have a job. Because, see, you reminded me when, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. And it's going to be hard to get along with a man when there is hardly anything in the refrigerator, but maybe some ketchup, some mustard, you know, a pack of ground meat and a few sausages or something along those lines and yet you want me to cook for you but you can't keep food in the refrigerator Lord Jesus then there's this issue of the housing situation and well bad memories can come flooding back if every time you look up we're short of rent or the mortgage isn't getting paid and Now we're all stressed out trying to meet a deadline. Oh, if you didn't grow up in that type of atmosphere, you're really going to have a problem with a man or a woman who is keeping you on edge. Stressing you out about this bill and that bill. Because see, she lived a certain lifestyle. And he lived a certain lifestyle and I'm not used to not having food in the refrigerator and I'm not used to lights being cut off and having to worry about rent and mortgage being paid. And I'm not used to a person not having a job or having, you know, just enough to get by. I'm not used to that. And so she's going to keep at you about getting the bills paid and he's going to keep coming at you with some foolishness about how come you're not getting this done and that done. 
you see, because my mother was the breadwinner and my mother took care of things and my mother was the one that was doing this, that, and the other. And why can't you work like she did? Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. You see, so there's these arguments that go back and forth and back and forth. And it's because we're not used to a certain atmosphere. We're not accustomed to living in this way. And I will tell you that some of you all, rather than argue, rather than argue, you need to reevaluate whether or not you need to be in a relationship with certain people. OK, you really do. If you're not married to them, you really have a way out. Oh, don't, don't try to make it complicated, Lord Jesus. I'm hearing him saying, don't try to make it complicated. You see, you're trying to take that, uh, I like to say that, that uh, square peg and fit it into a round hole. Meanwhile, you didn't, you didn't have any type of covenant union with this person. So you have a way out. Don't act like you don't. You know that you can't take care of that woman or you can't give all that you can to that relationship as a woman. No, I'm sorry, but I'm not really, you know, focused on trying to appease a man, cook for a man, take care of a man, be there for a man. I've got a job to do. I've got money to save up. I've got things that I need to accomplish. Then why are you trying to play wifey? Come on now. Why are you caught up in this type of uh, a twisted arrangement, if you will, when you got a way out? You see, I can talk like this because I remember those days playing wifey. You see, and when a man is trying to make you be a wife to him, but yet he hasn't put a ring on your finger, then you know that those unnecessary stresses don't have to be. You know that you can walk right on out. You, your job, your money, and everything you bought, Lord Jesus. Because he didn't say that he wanted to marry you. He said that he is thinking about it. He is saying things like, well, maybe one day. Well, maybe one day we can come to that, you know, mountain when we get there. In the meantime, I've got a job I need to focus on. I've got a future that I'm looking towards, okay? So you don't have to complicate things, some of you all, by staying in these types of relationships where you're not getting anything. You're putting everything into it, but you're not getting anything out. And there's no sense in creating all these ultimatums. You know, women are good for doing that, you know, and I can speak to that myself over the course of my years, giving men ultimatums. The truth of the matter is, is that if you have to get to a point where you have to give a grown man an ultimatum, you don't need to be with them. Lord Jesus, you don't need to be with them. If his daddy couldn't take the time out or maybe his daddy wasn't around and there wasn't any male guardian or anybody around him that he could zero in on and learn what it means to have a family. And you got to give him an ultimatum and a long list of what he needs to do and should do. Then that's not a man for you. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, you see, because some individuals in these relationships are far more spiritually mature and far more wise than the individuals that they're with. So they don't deserve to be with a person who has their life established and knows what they want and how to get it. They don't need to be with an individual who is putting God in the forefront and putting self on the back burner, you see. But sometimes the Christian is going to make a situation happen through ultimatums, policies, restrictions, laws, and everything else. And then ask God's approval on it. Then when everything takes place, you find out, oh Lord, this is why you didn't want me to get involved with this woman or this man. All of this drama, Lord Jesus, that was just my infatuation kicking in back in those days. That wasn't love. That was just lust kicking in. That wasn't love because if it was love, Lord Jesus, if it was love, I would be able to withstand. I would be able to stay with this person not, and not think about having to pack up and go. Lord Jesus, so this really wasn't love after all. Oh, my mama was right. My daddy was right. My best friend was right. Oh, some of you all, I know that this is a message that's not sitting too well, but it's a reality for so many people that's struggling in these relationships where it's not really about the house and it's not really about the job and it's not really 
Oh, Lord Jesus, it's not really about all those itty bitty things that just keep coming up. It's really about feeling comfortable in the relationship. It's really about trying to do what's right. And you can't do what's right when you're in love with Mr. Wrong or in like with Mr. Wrong or in lust with Mr. Wrong or infatuated with Mr. Wrong. It is not going to work when you're trying to see your mother, Lord Jesus, some of you all trying to see your mother in Miss Wrong, trying to make your uh, Miss Wrong be like your mother, trying to give all these policies and restrictions and what you like and don't like on the shoulders of Miss Wrong. And then you get mad when Miss Wrong turns around and says, I'm not doing that. Who do you think you are? Lord Jesus. Miss Wrong is never going to be Miss Right. Get that through some of your heads while you're looking at her and her nice little outfits and her pretty hair and nails and decorative skin Lord Jesus Lord Jesus I'm telling you we go through these trials in our life and we wonder why why because we never really sat down and focused in on what God willed for our lives I'm telling you some of you all are waiting around for relationships that are not meant to be you're waiting around for these relationships because you just want your flesh to be comforted but is it really worth all of the drama when you see these people around you going through all sorts of trial seeing them struggling they're not working together there's arguing, there's fussing, there's fighting, there's people using passive aggressive techniques, controlling maneuvers, ultimatums, policies, restrictions, and you want that for some of you singles who come across my audios? Are you sure? Are you sure that God is leading you toward an individual who is not 100% sold out on Christ? Are you sure that God is leading you to go to the church when you know, in fact, deep down inside, you can't stand the people in the church? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure that you really love that person and you, you just really just like them? You really just, you know, you're infatuated by them. Or maybe it's something a little bit more Deeper than that, going back to the intent of this audio, maybe, maybe it's because they're a good cook and you haven't had a good cook, never dated a good cook for some of you all still looking for Miss Right, Mr. Right. So there's that issue of food, right? And what if they don't make enough money to keep food in the refrigerator? I mean, you can always tell whether or not a person is having financial difficulties when you go over to their home and you see that they don't have much or you see that every time you go out with them, they're always pulling out a credit card. Something is happening with that. And skinny doesn't necessarily mean healthy. Petite doesn't necessarily mean healthy. Maybe they're that way because they don't have enough money. Hello? Hello? Some of you all. This whole issue of housing. Maybe it's not the fact that you love this person. Maybe you you like them and you're infatuated with them. But you like or, in, or you're more in love with that house arrangement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For some of you all, that's just what it was. You see, you got out of mama and daddy's house and you got into an opportunity that included a house. You know, uh, it included, you know, food and it included this job, this real good job that she or he had. And so that's what you're in love with. You're not in love with the person. You're in love with what surrounds the person. And you think God doesn't see that? You think that God is not sitting back and just watching how this story is going to unfold in 2015, 16, 17, and 18? Some of you all, you knew you got involved in these relationships for all the wrong reasons. 
Some of you all simply got involved in some of these relationships or you know people like this because we're not going to make it all about you. It could very well be some people you know that got involved in relationships like that for opportunity. It was just simply opportunity. They were too lazy to do anything else. And so why not capitalize off of what somebody else got? Why not capitalize off the anointing someone else has or the favor with God that someone else has? Because you or the, those that you know around you know that they haven't really been focused on Jesus Christ as much as they should have. Or matter of fact, mm, Jesus is irrelevant to them. But all of what Jesus is doing for this person and that one now, that's relevant. And I want in on that. Come on now. Oh, some of you all know folks like that. And then you hear about the arguments and you hear about the issues and you say to yourself, and I want that. Some of you singles. I don't think so. No, she can keep her fly car, her nice ride. She can keep that because it's not worth it. He can keep his beautiful house on a hill because all the mess I would have to go through. Oh, he's a good cook and he sure know how to keep a woman fed. Or she's a good cook and she knows how to, you know, fill a man's belly up. But all that other stuff that I got to deal with, no thank you. Because you see, we pray and we ask God to show us things in people. And when we see these things taking place, that's when we have to say, is it really worth it? Is it really worth walking down the aisle? Is it really worth allowing this person to move in with me or me pack my stuff up and go and move in with them? Is it really worth it? Is love really going to conquer all in this situation? Or is it just my fleshly needs that I want to, you know? To be fulfilled. It's never too late. It's never too late. It's never too late for those of you all who are not in committed relationships. Be free. Be free in these coming years. But for some of you all that are connected. Who are married. You're going to have to reevaluate a whole lot of things. And you're going to need God. You are definitely going to need God to see you through. Because divorces are happening so often anymore. And one thing about a divorce is it comes with a heavy price tag depending on whether you were the dependent one or whether you are the independent one. Because you can be independent in a relationship. Oh, you could have your own assets and so forth, but then you get locked up with somebody and now your assets become their assets. That's why you've got to be real careful. Some of you all signing documents and attaching yourself to people. Rushing to get married because you're in love with the idea of marriage. You're in love with the fantasy. And then you find out reality isn't what you envisioned it to be. But God does give us a way out. I'm a witness to that. He will give you a way out when you screw up, when you do things that you know you shouldn't have. But there is going to be consequences to sin. And even though God hates divorce, he knows that there are those believers who got themselves unequally yoked. And they're tired of arguing about the housing situation. And they're tired of arguing about the job. And they're tired of arguing about food in the house. And they're saying to themselves, I could have done bad all by myself. I could have stayed with my mama and my daddy. I could have been here, there, and everywhere. But this person right here is nothing but drama. And God can free you out of those situations if you're willing if you're willing to just listen to him this time around and do everything you're supposed to. And he will help you build a case. A case that will free you. And then you will be ever so grateful and you just might draw nearer to the Lord as a result. That's what I pray for those of you all who have to, unfortunately, divorce. That you will draw nearer to God. Because I will tell you that in the past when I divorced, it did help me to a certain degree. 
It helped me see what my errors were. It showed me that when God says don't do something, you best believe you need to listen and obey. But the same God that had to teach me some lessons in life is the same God that also showed me how loving and how merciful and how kind he is. And he's still doing a work. Even now, he is still doing a work. Because we do have issues from our past that tend to bother us in our present and could potentially give us all sorts of drama in the future. And I will tell you that God works those situations out as well. So I hope that those of you all who are battling like you are or you know of people who are battling with these basic, what seems like basic issues, I pray that they as well as yourself will be able to see the issues in the way that God sees them and come to a quick resolve because it would be very sad to end up uh, breaking up with someone or avoiding a potential marriage as a result of these basic issues housing uh, food and job so i thank you as always for listening and may god bless you